hey hey what up and welcome back everyone i'm sick vic the six five shooter today's video is going to be different than my past videos uh in the past you've seen me shooting all kinds of different targets and uh different items that i created and it was more just about uh fun shooting uh today we're going to go into kind of a discussion topic and that particular topic is going to uh, be about brass life or the longevity or what you can expect as you reload a piece of brass many times over. Some of the results may surprise you. This case, an example, has a severely cracked neck and it was still loaded three more times. We'll get into how those uh, results were affected by this later on in the video. The very first thing I should do is set the stage with a disclaimer. This subject is very broad and can be interpreted so many different ways and vary on so many different factors. So I'm not going to get into specifics or very uh, detailed information on this. It's more of just a discussion topic. And in the end, you're going to see things in this video where I'm just going to straight up tell you, don't do what I do. Now throughout this video while we're talking about brass and the brass life, I'm going to use standard deviation and kind of lightly use group size as a way to kind of validate the accuracy of it. Now I want to tell you my background, I'm a recreational shooter, I shoot at least three times a week, I am not a competitive shooter. So this information that I'm putting out, I don't have anything to reference it against. So if I say I reload 10 times, you may reload 105 on one particular set of brass, or you may reload seven. I don't know. So that's kind of why I'm putting it out just to share this information because it's kind of a voodoo subject. And, uh, you know, I kind of went over that in the disclaimer. So without stumbling around here anymore let's dive right into some information so i should give you some history on this particular lot of brass um, and when i say lot of brass i'm sure most reloaders take one sample of brass and they'll follow that particular group throughout its lifetime so if you take 10 rounds 20 30 whatever it may be they stay together and go all the way to the end so I'm gonna use that term a lot. Um, in my case, I started out with 34 rounds, I'm sorry, 34 cases. And at one point in time, I separated them down into 17 because winter came and it got too cold and I just couldn't shoot more than five or 10 rounds at a time. So this particular lot started in 2018. And it started out at desert shooting uh, at the distance of a mile. My notes at this time indicate that a 20 round sample provided a 6.95 standard deviation. At that time it was 73 degrees. Those numbers proved uh, capable accuracy at that time. Accuracy for me is being very close on the first shot so that you can have quick follow up shot success as in the example of this playing card and also blowing out this candle, both of which were a quarter of a mile. Here we have the 28th firing of this brass, fired in 20 degrees below zero, and here are the results of that eight round group. This shot shown is at a roofing nail pinned up at 416 yards. Here are the results of those five shots. This was the 32nd reloading. The first cold bore shot is number one and the nail strike was on number two. Here are some randomly selected targets from different times, different amount of firings, different distances. But one thing that remains uh, consistent is the group size designated by the black number and relatively consistent standard deviation numbers represented by the red. Let's go back and talk about that roofing nail shot that I did today. I want to point out that one of these cases that I used for that shot was the one that has been cracked and this was its fourth time fired out of its 32 firings. And just take a minute to look at that crack on the neck. I understand it seems totally crazy to use that case with the cracked neck, 
but I pulled out four other random ones from the lot and it was really designed around the purpose to test those rounds, cold bore shot, uh, all five rounds and see what kind of accuracy and standard deviation uh, we would get out of those particular cases. Remember, this is the 30 second firing and that crack case, this would be the fourth time fired on that. I think you're gonna find the results just pretty interesting. And here they are, five rounds fired, randomly selected, crack neck case, cold bore shot, and here are the results. So what do we end up with after gathering all this information throughout the lifespan, 32 firings, and what, what do we know here? Well, what I can say is that uh, consistently, this ammunition has produced group size, uh, group size being at whatever distance you're shooting, 0.39 MOA. So it shoots better than half MOA all throughout its life. Okay, what I can say is that the standard deviation sits right about the high six. So 675, 69, somewhere right around in there, consecutively and consistently. And when I say that, I'm not talking five rounds, I'm talking the whole lot. 17 rounds back in the day when this stuff started out, I'd shoot, uh, have information on 20 rounds, shooting it uh, 695 standard deviation. So consistently throughout. If I was to cherry pick this stuff and only show you the good stuff, those five rounds that I shot today with that cracked neck case, that cracked neck actually shot better than round number five. If I was to cherry pick and give you the standard deviation of those four rounds, including that cracked neck, the standard deviation for that would be 1.58. Everybody uses different standards. So I just want to point that out. It's really interesting the information that I'm putting out here and uh, I don't recommend you use cases like that but I wanted to go all the way through the end so you guys could see and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts on this. My final thoughts are that Kitty has to be in the video. Let's wind this down. So you say Sig Vic, Sub 7 SD sucks. Sub half MOA groups suck. That's not why we reload. We reload to do way better than that. Well, let me throw this out. So these numbers are taking are taken over a 100 degree temperature range. Okay, 75 to negative 20. These numbers are taken from over two barrels. These numbers are taken from someone who has not measured these cases in any other way than to measure the amount of powder that goes in and the amount of force it takes to seat that bullet. These numbers are taken from cases that are cracked and you're still firing. These numbers are taken from cases that are fired with SD numbers and group size from cold bore shooting. So these numbers are taken from non, a non-developmental standard. So I don't go out and do bullet jump and all this stuff. I kind of do like a hybrid ladder slash, uh, you know, uh, OCW type thing, but I don't go out and meticulously work to the frequency and the harmonics to balance this with the barrel to get these numbers. This is, is worst case scenario that you could possibly be and these still produce that number. Uh, this rifle is a stock rifle with the exception that it's been changed out to a Criterion barrel. Uh, the original one was just shot through had a lot of rounds. So I'm just saying look this over. To me it makes me second guess neck tension and of all these gadgets that get promoted on the channel, on YouTube, um, you know, for measuring, uh, you know, based ogive and uh, bullet weights. And my opinion, after doing this extensive study on this here and going back through all the notes, my opinion is, is that to achieve accuracy, it, it starts at the beginning. 
So your whole preparation of the brass in the beginning, I believe can just kind of carry you through for the remainder of the brass's life. I just feel like if you're fiddling with this stuff all day long and you've got all these gadgets and you're doing all this measuring, the numbers just doesn't seem to jive with that. So I value your opinion, like or hate, either way. Uh, if you do like it, like and subscribe. Sick Vic, 6'5 Shooter, and Kit Kit. Thanks for watching.